Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to work with a mouse in SDL. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So previously, we talked about how to handle keyboard input. And to the left, I have an example sort of building off of that. Uh, I didn't. I removed all the git keyboard states, so if you want to check out keyboard stuff, make sure you check out the previous two videos. Um, but the basic gist of it is figuring out what event type you have and something like a key being pressed, and then we can query into more information about what specific key was being pressed, how many times it was clicked, and so on. So again, check that previous video out if you want information about that. But today I want to focus on working with the mouse. So we'll go ahead and start with working with events and various event types, and then explore a little bit more of the API. Now the easiest way to get started for a mouse actually is to just look at, um, I'm going to go to the API by category here. And uh, I'm just going to search for mouse. There's a few different ways to get to this, but let's look at the mouse support here. And I'll get to the category mouse here. All right. Uh, and this will give me, if you scroll down, all of the mouse related functions. And you can see some of the ones I've clicked on and some of the structures and so on. Uh, but where I want to start here, uh, so starting from the directions here, is talking about uh, SDL events again and doing things with just moving a mouse around and figuring out its motion. So again, if you're doing gestures or just trying to figure out how much you move the mouse up over a variety of, uh, let's say, a, between two frames in a game here so you can calculate some sort of distance, this is going to be your helpful uh, event type that you want to track here. Okay, so with that said, Let's click on SDL uh, event mouse motion. It says, okay, refer to SDL event type here. Uh, okay, got a bunch of types here. Uh, the easiest thing actually is just going to be to, I'm just going to go to SDL event here uh, and just look at this structure again here. Um, so again, how to navigate this union here is to look at mouse motion event here, which is going to have our mouse motion data. And I usually just copy it and then do control F and then it'll take me to the bottom down here. And again, this is the event type that I'm concerned with here, uh, and the event dot motion. Okay, so let's go ahead here. We'll go ahead and add to our else if event dot type equals equals uh, event uh, mouse motion, and let's just go ahead and do a log here, and we'll log the actual motion that uh, took place here. And this is going to be event.motion, and that's what gives us access to this struct here, SDL mouse motion event. And then within this here, we can figure out things like the X and Y position. Again, these are floating point values, which is really, really nice here. And we can actually see the relative motion in the X and the Y direction. So let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's play around with a few of these, just so we can see like sort of the distance that we moved here. So uh, let's do, uh, we'll do this two times here. I'll just do X, Y. And then I'll put a comma there. Uh, and then again, this can be event.motion, x event.motion uh, dot y here. Okay. And that's as simple as that. And let's make sure we get one of these working here. I'll compile it and run it. And then now as I move around, you can see my x and y position. So again, the top left corner being 0, 0. And as I move to the right, the x position will increase. And as I move down, the y position will increase that second value here. Okay. To my bottom right corner here, which is the uh, maximum or the, or the width and height of the window here. Okay. All right. So let's look at those relative positions here. Uh, some nice properties. So X uh, relative and Y relative, just so you can see the uh, difference in what those mean. So I'll recompile, rerun. And now you'll see as I move around, you know, the X and the Y values are, you know, much smaller, uh, but they are negative sometimes, but it's telling me per the last time that I sort of queried where the position was, where was I? So if I move my mouse really fast, you'll see those values are sometimes larger because per the frame, my mouse skipped really fast, right? If I move my mouse in a direction really fast. And again, that can be very useful if you're doing like a rotation in a game or something, or trying to figure out like if you're literally in a game or mechanic, like flicking the mouse to do some sort of movement, the velocities, for instance, in the X and the Y direction. So you can use all this information to do interesting stuff with mouse motion here. Okay. So those are some of the interesting parts of mouse motion. Let's go ahead and start looking at how to detect mouse clicks. Okay, that's probably the next thing that we want to do here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is let's just scroll up to the top again, pretend we don't know what we're doing, SDL event. And if I look through these events here, I'll find mouse button event. Okay, so mouse button events means, uh, you know, mouse clicks. So let's go ahead and do it again, control F. And I'm looking for event uh, dot, well, I'll capture an event dot button rather, but these are the types of things I can do. And let's say we're concerned with just pressing the mouse down 
So uh, that's going to be our event type here. And then that'll give us the SDL mouse button event here. Okay, so one step at a time. That's our else if event dot type equals uh, mouse down here. And that'll give us the, uh, just to show you the second part of the picture here, event dot button then is how we access the union saying, hey, there was a button uh, event. So now we want to get treat this as whatever data is in that union SDL mouse button event. And then we could do some stuff like figure out uh, clicks, for instance, how often this button was clicked. So let's go ahead and do that log and let's do clicks. Uh, and this is going to give us some integer value here. Event dot uh, button dot clicks here. OK, so let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, move my mouse in. Now, I'm still capturing the motion events here, but if I stop and then just click my mouse, you'll see there it is. If I click really fast, um, you'll see that the clicks go up and then it'll refresh down to zero. So again, if double clicking or triple clicking or something's important in your application, if that means something, uh, you can do this. Now, of course, you can configure this yourself or if you want to set up the timing, you know, uh, you can, of course, adjust this as you want. But again, that's a field here. Uh, of course, we can see if the button is pressed down or not, but probably what we care about is which button was pressed. Uh, so the button index here. Uh, and let's see if there's any useful notes here. Not any notes here that are very interesting, but I'll help you out here in a moment. Uh, let's actually just put it, let's put some notes here. Uh, let's just write out event button dot uh, button. So that'll tell us the button clicked, SDL log button clicked. And then we'll need a value for that. And let's go ahead and print that out. So I'll recompile, rerun. And then if I left click, uh, that's the one button. Middle click is two, right click is three. Okay, so that works uh, quite nice here. That gives me the right uh, button here. Okay, um, now let's go ahead and let's go back here. So we have our button clicks here. Um, let's look at, uh, now that I know about the, the button click here, I mean, how would I know one, two, and three corresponds to, you know, which, which particular button? Now for that, I'm going to go back into the mouse uh, API here. Um, and I'm going to use get mouse state here to look at some stuff here. Now, this is another way of querying where the mouse position is. But immediately what I'm really interested in is going into this uh, SDL uh, mouse button flags here, which tells me the corresponding one for left, two for middle, and three for right here. Okay, so before I get into you know some of these other functions here, let's just handle this by saying if uh, event dot button dot button equals SDL button, and again I'm looking here left. Let me scroll that up for you. Uh, then we can print out you know uh, left button clicked or something here. Okay, and let's do that for uh, the right button. Or rather middle, we'll do them in order, and right, left, middle, and right. And let's see here, if I recompile, rerun, left, right, middle. Uh, if I hold down the left and the right, uh, let's see, I might need to make this a little bit larger for you. There we go. Uh, let's see if I hold down all the, if I just spam, I mean, if I'm holding them, sort of at the same time, you can kind of process both events. So again, there might be a reason to say if, you know, and, and have this both conditions trigger or something. More than likely, what you want to do is do something like an and here if you want to handle uh, the left and right uh, mouse clicks at the same time or all three or whatever. So again, you could decide if this should be if, else if, or whatever. But again, that's the way to handle these button presses, okay? And these are stored in a type for uh, SDL mouse button flags here, OK? Um, and that's what you'll get back uh, from this SDL get mouse state here, uh, the mouse button flags here. Um, the most important thing, or the, the thing that I use SDL get mouse state for, I'll show you. Um, let me comment out the uh, mouse motion stuff, just because it's going to get a little bit uh, polluted otherwise, right? I just want to handle the clicks for now. Um, but let's just go ahead and show how to use SDL get mouse state. So uh, let's see, this is, I'll just copy this function here. Let's paste it in so you can see it. So the flags here, I don't know, just call this like 
mouse or something. And then again, I might want to store the X and the Y value. Uh, if you're new to C, um, these are basically like output parameters when you see these pointers here. Um, you know, that way, whatever value internally is stored by SDL for the X in the Y mouse position, I can also write it out by passing in the address here. Okay, and that, that's what's going on here. So that's why I'm doing ampersand address of X address of Y here. Uh, and then I can do the same thing, SDL log uh, for the X and the Y positions here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do something like this. I'm just gonna pass in my format string and you'll see that works uh, just the same here where I get my uh, mouse positions here. And again, I can uh, move my window here. Oops, I made it really large here. Uh, and even if I move my window, these positions are relative to the window. There are some like get global mouse state, which if, even if I move my cursor outside, it'll update the position, but I don't really wanna do that. I just want it within whenever it's within the actual application. Uh, so you can check out some of those functions here. Um, because there is, let's see, SDL get global mouse state here. Um, let's see. Um, if you need to track the mouse outside of the specific window. Yeah, this is the one I'm thinking of here. So let me just comment this out here for now. And this will be get uh, global mouse state just to show you the difference. Um, so notice how my pixels are like, 4,000 or something, you know, crazy values. That's because I have three monitors in front of me. Uh, let's see, I gotta move my mouse like way, I'll find monitor number one, wherever the corner is. And then all the way down, I guess this is my like third monitor. This is how many pixels I have right now, which is awesome. But um, but if you've ever been to like a, well, back in the old day, like Best Buy, they'd have like 20 computers stacked on top of each other, right? Acting as one monitor or maybe a museum exhibit or something like that, or just like a concert where they have a bunch of TVs uh, kind of glued together. Th this is where you might wanna use this like global state thing to, to say, hey, I own all four of these monitors. They're arranged in a grid or whatever. Um, and those pixel positions are meaningful. So again, you have an option to do that. Most of the time I'm probably using this here. I'll just put a comment, um, get mouse position outside window across, you know, multiple monitors. That's the idea there. Uh, and this is get the local within current window mouse position, okay? And you can have multiple windows in SDL. So again, uh, if you have multiple windows available, then you'll need to use this. Um, and, it, and there's a few other mouse functions, I think, for just within a specific window to, to get here. Uh, you can set like the window where you're grabbing information from. Um, okay, great. Uh, so the last thing that I wanna show you is, uh, that I sometimes use is like warp mouse in window. And this is basically a way to move the mouse cursor to a given position, okay? So why would I wanna do this? Here's one use case. Like if you have a first person shooter perspective game, right and you want to use the mouse for mouse look um, usually you want to center the mouse uh, in the middle of the window right wherever you're oriented so then if i move left and use that relative change in location then i i know i'm always starting centered okay so i'm gonna start my application here uh, by calling sdl warp uh, mouse in window uh, we have a window it's just called window here and i'm just gonna put it in the middle of the screen here now I'm gonna do the math here, 320 divided by two. The computer's gonna do some of the math for me. <laughs> uh, that, and that's you know gonna just center it in my window when the application starts. Okay, so let's see where the window pops up. And yeah, my mouse here, if you see the position below 160, 120, it's always centered. Now, I, if I move it to the left or the right, it doesn't really matter, but um, then I know it's always in a centered position and then I can, I can either lock it there if I want, if I don't want the user to use their mouse at all for whatever reason, but usually again, it's nice to kind of center it. And sometimes you do want to recenter your mouse again and just use the relative movement to create some sort of rotation or change in velocity. So again, these are things you can play with. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is don't do this. Don't pick your numbers, actually query the numbers. Uh, and let's actually show you how to do that. Uh, let's look at window. And there should be like a width function or here, get window SDL, get uh, function here, get display properties, uh, I don't know, get window, 
Uh, let's see, get window width, height, size. Uh, there it is, get window size. All right. Uh, and this will do the same thing where I can get the width and the height here instead of being very, very lazy here. Uh, let's not be very, very lazy. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and these are going to be integers uh, for width and height. SDL, get window uh, size. We're not at the point where I need to show you how to do everything perfect. We're just, you know, in a sandbox here learning SDL here. Uh, but, you know, width divided by two, height divided by two. And we should still see the same result here. So you get a little bit of a bonus there. Uh, and I was less lazy, which is a good thing. <laughs> so you had to get the size and always center your cursor. So now you know, occasionally that becomes uh, handy. Alrighty, folks. So that's pretty much it. What I want to show you with uh, mouse functionality, basic mouse functionality for most of the things that you'll want to do. Retrieving positions, uh, doing left, right, middle clicks, and so on. That should get you most of the way for the things that you want to do. And uh, as always, if you want to catch up on those other lessons, uh, feel free to check out course.mshot.io. Uh, you'll watch, again, the same videos that you're watching here. If you're watching on the YouTube, maybe you're already watching them on course.mshot.io. In that case, awesome. Uh, and uh, thank you again for watching. Thanks for listening. Let me know if there's some other cool stuff we should know about input devices or if you've used some of the other APIs like the, the pen uh, and, and touch events and so on. They're relatively easy to figure out. But again, if you want a video on that or think it might be useful, please let me know. Thanks again for your time and attention, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.